Alrighty, this is what we've been waiting for. We have been building up in this unit all the way up to this very lesson, which is the introduction of comparison bars. And comparison bars are not just for, um, you know, like an option for students as a way to draw. It really is a problem type. There's, you know, eight different problem types in our standards. Whether you're a common core state or not, this is not a common core thing or a math expressions thing. This is a story problem thing. This is a type of problem when we're comparing who has more and who has less. So our goal for our first graders is to help them understand that this is not a math mountain problem. So in math mountain problems, something went away, something um, you know left, or something came together. We are putting numbers together, um, or we were breaking numbers apart. So we had maybe ten shirts. Some were striped. Some were short sleeved. That was a math mountain problem. Okay. So this is different. So let's read the problem and it builds on all the lessons we've been doing so far um, into comparisons. Jenna has ten crayons. Armando has three. How many crayon? How many more crayons does Jenna have than Armando? Okay, so did Jenna get more crayons? No. Did Armando get more crayons? No. Um, did they put their crayons together? No. What are we wanting to know? And so in this case, we want students to recognize that we want to know that some, um, how many more one person has than another. When we talk about how many more or how many fewer, that means we're comparing. So boys and girls, how might you solve this problem? Now I put this lesson on a Jamboard. You also have it on Google Slides, but I actually think it's more conducive now for Jamboard um, because of the type of um, drawing that students need to do. So we want to have this slide open to them where they're going to solve it and try all the different ways they might come up with something and then we'll take what they come up with to build towards our point of today which is comparison bars. So what we hope to see is we hope to see a circle drawing. Now they can use their circle drawings with their pen tool, right, or they can use, um, if I erase that, they can use the shape. So they are going to decide which one they want to use, but don't guide them, just let them use what they want. So if Jenna has 10 crayons, okay, and I just duplicate, copy, and paste, which I've seen first graders learn. They can absolutely do this, or they can. you can have all the copies for them right here. You can duplicate yourself, and then they can just drag and drop. I did not do that for you because it does, um, this Jamboard already has all of your stair steps on it, and it just tends to slow down the bandwidth if I put too many things on a slide. So here I have five, let's keep going. And I'm gonna do another group of five. I'm gonna do a space just to remind myself that five groups are always um, easier and better to read that way. Okay, so now I have another group of five and we know that Armando has three. So here's Armando's. And what we know is that if students don't do this, we need to prompt them of asking the who's is who. Like, how do I know who, you know, are we count putting all these together? And they're like, no, we're not putting them together. Um, we are matching them, but we first need to know who is who. So let's label it. This is Jenna and this is Armando. Okay, so now let's stop here for just a minute and let's use all of the language that we've been learning in this unit. So who has the most? We would say Jenna has the most crayons. Who has the least? Um, Armando has the least crayons. Okay, so instead of I, we would replace, of course, their names. So now let's say Jenna has, what does Jenna have? Jenna has how many more? Well, let's connect to find out how many more. So if I connect, these guys have matches these do not have matches. Okay, so we can now say that Jenna has seven more than Armando. Let's start with Armando. That means Armando has seven less than Jenna. How could we make the groups equal? Well, we could give seven more here to Armando if we wanted to. So let's answer the question though. How many more crayons does Jenna have? So Jenna has these that are the same as Armando. These are how many more are extra. So she has seven more than Armando. So we're gonna put seven there. Okay, now let's use our stair steps. So boys and girls, which stair steps would you use? And you kind of want them to explore a little bit, figure out which ones they need. Um, let's see, is that seven? Nope, that's eight. Here we go, there's seven. Um, and so now we're gonna label these. So how can I do the same thing? So we're gonna say Jenna had 10 crayons. Armando had, um, oh, that's not right. Some of you are looking at me like I'm a little bit crazy. Let's see here, there we go. And Armando has three, there we go. 
All right, so Armando has three crayons, and now we want to know how they're different. So this space, what we circle here, is how they're different. These are not the same. These are the same. This is what's different. So now we can use the language again. Jenna has the most crayons. Armando has the least. Jenna has seven more than Armando. Armando has seven fewer than Jenna. Well, what if I didn't do the circle drawing and I didn't do stair steps, but I did something that was very similar? What if I wanted to put a box, and let me grab a different color here, around Jenna's and a different box around Armando's, and then I kept where I circled what was different. What if I just kept that oval here at the bottom? So let's do it down here. What if I said, I wanna know who has the most? And you said, well, Jenna has the most. Okay, great. So we're gonna put J for Jenna and we're gonna give her the most. So we're gonna give her the longest bar. And then we know that Armando has the least. And so does Armando's bar go as long? Nope, it only goes part of the way because he has the least. Okay, and then if I wanna know, well, how are they different? Which ones are not the same? We're gonna put an oval here because this is how they're not the same. So now let's plug in what we know. Jenna has 10, Armando has three. This is what we don't know. This is the difference. This tells us how many more, or this tells us how many fewer. Okay, so just like with our, our circle drawings and our stair steps, we can know that there's extra here that does not match and that's how many more or how many fewer. So how is this uh, method different than these methods? And students should start to see that, well, we don't have to draw all the dots in here. We don't have to draw the circles. We don't have to do matching. We just took a little bit of a shortcut and we wrote the numbers instead of doing the matching. So can we tell how much is here? And then you can, of course, elicit from students their understanding of how we figure out what number goes here. Some students are gonna say, well, I know it's seven. Well, how do you know? Because I know three and seven are partners of 10. Right, because didn't we say we had to do seven to make them equal? So they're thinking, well, what would I have to put here to make it equal, which is exactly what we've been doing in the unit so far. So you can see how all the lessons are building up to this. Okay, so seven is what we'd have to do for equal. And some kids will say, oh, well, I just counted on from three to see how many wouldn't have matches. So I know three would have matches. And then I went three, four, oh, we'll grab a different color here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that was seven. So I know the difference was seven. Okay, let's restate the comparison. Jenna has the most crayons. Armando has the fewest crayons. Start with Jenna. Jenna has seven more. Her bar goes seven longer than Armando. Armando has seven fewer, his bar doesn't go as far than Jenna. So I hope you can see here just all the different ways that we're going to encourage students to see the connections between the circle drawings and we go a little bit um, less concrete and we go to the stair steps and then you can see now we're gonna go really abstract and we're just gonna put the numbers in here. You're going to keep students as to where their understanding is. Some students are gonna be ready for that full abstract bar model. Other students are gonna draw the bar model that they may still need to do the circle drawings inside the bar model to help them do the solving. Um, students are different. I find more first graders tend to stay here um, and then we really do take them more abstract as they get into second. But start with having them draw those bars of someone had the most, someone has the least, this is how they're different. Everyone, draw comparison bars. Someone has the most, someone has the least, this is how they're different. And notice my oval doesn't go past this line because we know these two together equal this top row. Okay, so we're gonna do it again. Everyone draw a comparison bar. Someone has the most, someone has the least. This is how they're different. So you'll continue with this because what starts to happen is now we have different unknowns just like we had with the, or the Math Mountain. So students, are going to need more than one day with this, obviously, because we jump right to different types of unknowns. You might need to stay one day on just the difference unknown, and then and the next day do the problems where it's one of the um, partners that are unknown, um, or you know the, the one with more is unknown, or the one that it's least. So here we have Seth ran two blocks, Reagan ran seven. How many fewer blocks did Sarah walk than Reagan? Okay, let's talk about it. Are we putting numbers together? Are we putting how much Seth ran and Reagan put together? 
Nope. Did we subtract? Did we um, say Seth took away two of his blocks? And kids would laugh like, nope, nope, that doesn't even make sense. We can't do that. Even though it says how many fewer, that does not mean it's subtraction. Okay, we can't do that to our students. That is not the case. That is a key word that expires in second grade. It no longer means to subtract. It could be confusing, complicated language that actually will end up meaning that they will add. Okay, so that's coming. Be careful of those tricks. Um, so how much, you know, did, do we want to know, um, compare some, do we want to know that someone has more and someone has less? Yes. What type of a problem is this comparison bar? So it's not a math mountain, right? This is not a math mountain because we're not putting numbers together. We're not taking numbers apart. Okay. Now we might do it to solve, but it's not how we represent. So let's represent it with a circle drawing. So who has the most? Reagan, you're right. So let's put Reagan. How much does Reagan have? Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Who has the least? Seth. How many does he have? Two. One, One two. two. What does the is question, the question ask, ask us? How many fewer blocks did Seth run than Reagan? How many fewer? So let's circle. We know we're looking for this amount, how they're different. So we connect, we connect. How are they different? There are five that are different. Now let's use all of our comparison language. You'll restate all your comparisons. Let's use our stair steps. If Reagan had five and um, Seth had seven, or Reagan had seven, we can do that together, right? There we go. Um, okay, so, oh goodness, I keep doing that. Uh, Seth had two, just kidding, friends. Here we go, Seth had two, Reagan ran seven. Label it, okay? This is Reagan, this is Sarah. This is how they are different. Okay, let's draw comparison bars. Who has the most? Reagan, because he has seven. Okay, label it. Who has the least? Seth, because he has less. This is called the difference. It's how many more Reagan has, or it's how many fewer Seth has. Now let's plug in what we know. It says Seth ran two. Let's put two. It says Reagan ran seven. Let's put seven. Do we know how they're different yet? Nope, that's what the problem wants to know, unknown number. How can we solve that? What number would go here to make these equal? Could we count on? Could we subtract? There's all sorts of solution methods, but th what we're trying to figure out is what's the unknown, put a box, and restate this now using all of our comparison language. So again, you're going to continue with that until you get to this next type of problem in which this unknown partner or unknown number is going to end up being either um, Seth's or Reagan's, where now it tells us the difference. It tells us, oh, look, it's three more. or Oh, look, it's two more. So let's jump into a couple of those. Um, so let's see, this is the same. So Aaliyah has eight dolls. Seth has two more dolls. Um, then Abby has, how many dolls does Seth have? As you get here, we're gonna say, so Aaliyah has eight dolls, okay? So here's eight dolls, and there's Aaliyah. And then Seth has two? Oh no, Seth does not have two, it doesn't say that. What does it say, everyone? It says that he has two more. So if this is Aaliyah, Seth has to go two more than Aaliyah. Right, so if I were to say that this now is what we don't know, we don't know how much is Seth's, right? So Seth has the most. So Seth is going to be the longest bar, okay? So now we can say, well, let's set that up then. We know that this is the more, um, this is how many more. So Seth is actually gonna take the top now. Aaliyah is gonna take the bottom. So Aaliyah has the fewest, and we know for sure the problem tells us that she has eight. Right, and we know that Seth is two more than that. So these are gonna line up, except for Seth is gonna go two more than that. So now I know that whatever I put here has to be the same. So if this is eight, we're going to make it duplicate. There's eight. So if they had the same amount, they'd both have eight. But Seth said that he has two more. So altogether, what does Seth have? Altogether, Seth has 10 dolls. Aaliyah has eight dolls. This is how they're different, which happens to be the same number here. 
right? So that's going to be the complicated one for the students. I think they're going to need several examples of this. Use the stair steps, use the circle drawings. Now we get to comparison bar. So who, all right, let's put it together now. So who has the most? We know that actually Seth has the most because it says he has more than Aaliyah. Aaliyah has the fewest. And this is the difference. This is how the two numbers are different. It also tells us who has more and who has fewer, which is the difference. So now let's plug in what we know. It says Aaliyah has eight. So Aaliyah has eight dolls. It says Seth has two more. So this is the difference. This is how many more. That's two. But really that two belongs to Seth, right? That shows that the, this is what is different. So how many does Seth have? So now we can figure out, we can see that, well, I would just need um, Aaliyah's, which is eight. If I gave her two more, that would make their amounts the same. So that means that Seth would have 10. So this area, I'm going to change my colors here. This area and this area equal the same amount. So I can see that 8 plus 2 equals 10. So I can give Aaliyah two more to make it the same as Seth. So that's going to give you a head start, my friends. Go slow. This is a, a strategy that's going to be used in every single grade level through sixth grade. In fact, it goes into six. Um, Sixth grade, it talks about ratios and proportions. They're gonna use it for multiplicative reasoning in fifth grade. Um, it's going to carry with students for a very long time. So you're just the start of it. We're trying to get first graders to see that we can either use a math fountain, if that's the problem type, or this is a different problem type, and now we can use comparison bars. Um, so we're gonna have them build it three different ways, or you can choose. Okay, Johnny, you're really good at this one. You can keep this one and choose maybe, maybe choose just one other one. Or Sandra, I really think you still need the circle drawings because she's still very concrete, right? And she needs to figure out how many she has to put in here to match. Um, and then maybe, you know, the stair steps. But drawing the bars around it is a skill they'll need for second grade. So even if they do the circle drawings, have them by the time they're done, do their circle drawing or their bar model, excuse me, so that they can see what's the same and what is different. All right, friends, have fun. Ask some questions in our Facebook group if you have any questions at all.